师傅。Hello viewers, these are the components of a solar power system. As you can see, we have the solar panel. This is our solar panel, a monocrystalline solar panel. It is a 250 watt solar panel. We have the inverter. This is a hybrid inverter. We have the modified sine wave inverter. We have the transformer base inverter. We also have the battery. This is a 100 amps battery. This is a 200 amps battery. And we have the charge controller. It is a 60 amps PWM charge controller. Today, I'll explain to you how these components are connected together to convert the energy from the sun to electrical energy. We start with the solar panel. This is where the energy, this is where all the magic, rather, all the magic of a solar power system starts from. Once it is exposed to the sun, the solar panel starts generating current and voltage in the form of DC, that's direct current. The solar panel converts the sun's energy into electrical energy. Once the energy is uh, generated by the solar panel, it moves from the solar panel to this device called the charge controller. This is a PWM charge controller. We have the MPPT, that is uh, Maximum Power Point Tracking Controller. Then PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation. The MPPT charge controller is more rugged and more efficient than the PWM charge controller. The MPPT is also more expensive than the PWM charge controller. Now, the function of the charge controller is to safely charge the battery. It is a charger. It charges the battery. It controls what goes into the battery from the solar panel so that the battery will not be over, over discharged or overcharge <clears throat> so that is the function of this component the absence of this component will lead to a shorter lifespan of uh, the battery because anything the panel generates that's what it will receive the battery will, will receive which is not good and safe for the battery now we have the battery there is a 12 volt 100 amps battery then the one down is a 12 volt 200 amps battery the function of the battery is for backup. The energy that is generated by the solar panel uh, moves to the charge controller down to the battery. So the battery serves like a reservoir. Since the sun is not always available, it's not always there for us to harness, there is need for a device, a storage device, something that will store the current, a reservoir that when the panel generates, the reservoir will store this power, store this energy, so that whenever we need the energy, you just go there, you know, and tap from it. So, it's just like your overhead tank, that way you pump water and store. When you need the water, it's just for you to open your tap, and the water will start flowing. That is the function of this uh, battery. So there are different types of battery. We have the lithium battery. We have the uh, flooded battery. This one is a sealed battery. Call it sealed or maintenance free battery. In the course of this training, we'll tell you their differences and show you how to connect or install all of them. Now the next component is the inverter. This is our inverter. Why do we need an inverter? Remember that what is being uh, generated by the solar panel is direct current, DC. What is also stored in <clears throat> our battery is also direct current. 
but most of uh, our conventional appliances are AC appliances. That is, they make use of 220 volts. In some areas, they make use of 110 volts. But what is stored in the battery, some of them are 2 volts DC, some 12 volts DC. Then depending on how you configure the battery, the, the way you size them, some may have a 24-volt system, may have a 48-volt system. So this energy or this uh, voltage cannot be used to power your AC appliances that are 110 volt AC or 220 volt AC. So what the inverter does, this device, is that it converts DC to AC. So what is stored in the battery is DC, but once it enters this uh, inverter and comes out, what the output you have is AC, which you can, which you now use to power your AC appliances. Now we have the hybrid inverter. This is a hybrid inverter. The one you can see here is a hybrid inverter. You can see the hybrid inverter. It has an inbuilt charge controller. So with this hybrid inverter, you don't need this external uh, charger. You don't need this external charge controller. Everything is inbuilt. What well, is this is a 3 kVA 24 volts inverter with an inbuilt MPPT. Uh, charge controller you can see it from the name plates all the specifications you can see the rated power is 3000 VA 2000 slash 2400 watts you have the DC input 24 volts that's what comes out from the battery <coughs> the the minimum uh, requirement of battery voltage that is needed to to start up the inverter is 24 volts DC then the AC output is 230 volts AC which means if uh, this inverter receives an input voltage of 24 volt DC what will be coming out as you are seeing it the AC output is 230 volts uh, AC which means you can use this voltage to power your AC appliances that are rated 220 uh, 230 volts then we have uh, there's a AC charger here that means you can use uh, power from the grid or you can use uh, a generator uh, you know to charge your battery that is <clears throat> you can impute a um, what's it called power from the grid or from the generator you use that power to charge the battery so that's what you're having the ac input 230 volt then you have dc output 27 volts dc the the energy or the voltage that is needed to charge the batteries then the maximum current you can see there's 60 amps you can see 60 amps then the my AC output of the inverter is 230 volts AC then look at it you see it's solar charger mode letting you know that this uh, inverter has an inbuilt solar charge controller so the rated current from for the inbuilt solar charge controller is 60 amps then the system voltage is a 24 volt uh, system. Then the minimum solar voltage is 30 volt DC. Then the maximum solar voltage is 145 volt uh, uh, DC. So as time goes on, we will, I will show you how uh, these things are being connected, how you can interpret what is written here. That's the nameplate. When you see things like this, how you can interpret it and use it to design your system. Then we have, this is a bigger inverter, you can see it. This one is a transformer inverter. It's a 5 kVA, 48 volts uh, inverter. So for it, for this one to start, you will need four of uh, 12 volts batteries. You connect them in series uh, to give you 48 volts before this uh, inverter will come on, will come up. So also in the course of this uh, training, We'll show you how to connect batteries in series and in parallel, connect solar panels in series and in parallel, depending on the, on the size of your solar system, depending on the configuration, depending on what you want. If you want a 24-volt system, a 12-volt system, a 48-volt system, we'll show you how to you know, connect the solar panels, connect the batteries to give you what you, uh, what you want. Now, for the... PWM charge controller you can see what is written there the maximum current is 60 amps 
the rated voltage is uh, 12, 24, 36, and 48 volts. It is automatic. So if you input, input a 12, uh, uh, if your battery uh, voltage system is 12 volts, once you input it, the, the charge controller will automatically detect it. If it is 48 volt, it will do the same. Then if you look at this charge controller also, you discover that there are six terminals in the in the charge controller and also three symbols the first one here is for solar input the middle one is for battery input and this other one by the left is for uh, load output in other words if you connect a battery to this charge controller connect solar panels you can use this charge controller to power uh, DC loads. So from here you can connect your DC loads. DC loads like uh, <clears throat> your DC bulbs, DC freezer, freezer, sorry, DC air conditioner, any load that is DC. But the voltage must be compatible with the rated voltage that is uh, that is given in this inverter uh, that this uh, controller can carry. The rated voltage here is 12. 24, 36, or 48 volts. So your DC appliance should either be 12 volt, 24 volt, 36 volt, or 48 volts. So it should be compatible with this one. Then another one. Then another thing is that we have what is called a solar pump. A solar pump. Uh, majority of the solar pumps we have. Some you find them in the, ho in the public uh, places like the hospitals, schools. We also find them in our communities. You discover that those pumps only work during the day when the sun is available. It means they, they don't depend on the battery for them to function. Without the battery, they can work because they have their own controller that you can connect the solar panels direct to that controller. You connect the pump, the solar pump to the controller. Once the sun comes up, you see that you know the, the, the pump will start pumping. Then when the sun is not there again, it will, it will shut down. It will not pump <clears throat> until the next day when the sun is available. So uh, the essence of uh, this battery again, like I told us, is for backup because we have different sunshine hours. Like in Nigeria, in northern Nigeria, the sunshine hours in northern Nigeria is uh, higher than the sunshine hours. It's more than the sunshine hours we have in southern Nigeria. So you keep the battery as a backup so that whenever you have that sun, it will just generate the energy and store for you in the battery so that you can use. Since it is not there 24 hours a day for us to harness. So that is the major function of the battery. So any system that... Uh, uh, has a battery we call them a, uh, we call them battery based systems there are other systems that are called grid uh, systems that is they function with uh, the power from the grid and with the solar panels so once the sun is not there if the power if there's power from the grid you they, they, they do an automatic switch if there's uh, there's no power in the from the grid they switch over to solar so is uh, we are going to show you how to I'm going to show you how to do all those things, how to, you know, size your system, design the system, you know, calculate the sunshine. Using the sunshine hours in your area, you can design a system that will last you for 12 hours. If you have five bulbs, you have a, a home theater, you have a TV, you have uh, uh, maybe a laptop charger, you want to design a system that... You know, we'll carry those appliances for 5 hours, for 10 hours, for 12 hours, for the whole 24 hours. I will show you how to do that. If you want a backup like a days of autonomy, such that the system can last for 3 days, for 2 days, even when there is, uh, there is no sun, that is for cloudy days, when there is rain, the system, the solar system can last like that. Uh, I will show you how to do that. So do well to subscribe to my channel. So that anytime I drop a video, you will be notified so that you can follow this training. Remember that the solar industry is growing every day as a result of uh, carbon emission, greenhouse gas, uh, climate change. Many nations are moving towards renewable, renewable energy. There is need for, 
for people that will service the systems that was designed solar systems that would install these solar systems so this is an uh, this is an uh, ample opportunity for you to join in uh, learning how to to size a solar system design a solar system install it and also maintain it we also have other components like the cable we use the cable to link all the components together connect the cable from the panel positive and negative that's the black and red connect it from the panel to the charge controller from the charge controller to the battery from the battery to the inverter even from the inverter to your db your distribution box so cables are used to link all these components together there are different sizes of cable this one is a two core it's a two core 10 mm cable this one is a 16 mm uh, cable then uh, the size of the cable depends on you know the, the the size of your system and of course uh, the size of your system will determine the amount of current that is coming out of the system the amount of current that the panel is generating the amount of current that will be leaving the battery to the inverter once you put it on so all those things will determine the the, the size of the cable I will also show you how to you know know the size or calculate the size of cable that will be uh, that will be okay for the system you want to design because most times if the cable is not okay uh, at times the cable may burn at times the system will not be functioning well the inverter may trip off a lot of things the system will not be efficient then we have another one this is a breaker can see it is a DC breaker this is a breaker <coughs> uh, from your between the charge controller and the panel you need a breaker between the charge controller and the battery you also need a, a breaker between the battery and the, the inverter you need a breaker from the inverter to your DB you need a breaker uh, we also have other uh, protective devices like the thunder arrestor, the such protective devices. We have other devices that are used to manage the system, the BMS, battery management system. So, like I told you earlier, in the course of this uh, training, I will show you how all these things are being put together to convert the sun's energy into electrical energy in an efficient way. You know, failure to know how to size these things will not give you an efficient system. When you install the system, you begin to have issues. So do well to subscribe to my channel so that you will learn more uh, and also learn, you'll be trained on how to install and maintain a solar power system.